This is Andy Daly informing you that this episode of the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project is brought to you by a sponsor, and that sponsor is Heineken. With all the stresses of life, it can be easy to lose perspective on what really matters, but Heineken believes that life is about being with friends and opening yourself to new experiences. Because when you live spontaneously and embrace the unexpected, it's a chance to create new stories and connections. You just have to be open to it, people. So listen, enjoy a refreshingly full-bodied Heineken lager today with its deep golden color, light fruity aroma, mild bitter taste, and a crisp, clean finish. Enjoy the show! Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. Here are your hosts, Matt Gorley and Andy Daly. Hello and welcome to another episode of this podcast. It's called the Andy Daly Pilot, nope, no. Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. You are sincerely screwing that up. That is not a, you're, that is not for show. I know, it wasn't just a one-time thing. No, it's hard. It's What's a happened? hard title. Well, for one thing, we've been working hard on this thing, like up nights, slaving yeah. away. Yes. So part of it is just fatigue, and that's all in the, the order of bringing you the best quality entertainment we can find. Yes. I mean, we are presenting eight pilots for you to listen to, but understand that we have listened to literally thousands. Yeah, and that didn't end when we selected these. We're no. still listening. Oh, we're still listening. Yeah. Yes, all the time. Yeah, but there's no time for sleeping. Right. But this uh, podcast is, uh, in some ways, it is, it is, as Scrooge says to the ghost of Christmas future, it is the one I fear the most. Yeah, and that being said, we didn't listen to this ahead of time. Yeah. We just greenlit it out of just, I guess, the gravitas of, of Don DeMillo. But we did listen to it between well, last we were, week and this week. Yes. We were hungry for a political-themed podcast. Political podcasts are so popular mm-hmm. now. We finally got one. It's hot. And yes, exactly. And we just said, you know, we, we haven't had one of these yet. We got to do it. And it's it's a definitely a political podcast, but it is it is very narrowly focused. Uh <laughs> specifically on on the P-tape. It's so political, it's just focused on a bodily function in many ways. Yeah. It's it so is. political, it's anatomical. Yeah. yeah. And this one is also, we should say, a second bite at the apple for theatrical director Don DeMello, who had a pilot last year, uh, or no, however many years ago it was. Four years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the Ion Theater with Don DeMello. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a, a sort of a more conventional podcast in the sense that he was, he was discussing the world of theater. Yeah. Uh-huh. But conventional in its concept, yeah. unconventional in its execution. Yes. This and was another one of those podcasts about which I heard from people that, oh, don't give a platform to that guy. He's horrible and, you know, very compelling arguments. Yeah. And in this case, I think we actually did take uh, listener feedback. And so we did go back to him and say, mm-hmm. we want you back, but you got you to gotta get right with your content. You know, you got to make it uh, digestible for a general audience. And so he gave us the P tape. <laughs> He took the note. He took the note. What are you gonna, he took the note. Uh, and he's brought back his uh, his his cronies, you know. Uh, Mal Backman is back. He yeah. was also on uh, Ion Theater. That's right. A fellow by the name of, who just goes by the name of Falcon is back. And, sure. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and he also introduces some other guests with some important insights on the, the topic. Of- yeah, he's brought in experts on this very topic, which is exciting. So. Yes. And. You know, I mean, I kind of think like, can this be a real podcast? But I mean, well, you'll see, you'll hear it. I, at the end of this, I kind of feel like, yeah, there's a lot to unpack. I was dubious myself, but it does seem like an ongoing saga. And as long as the real world story exists, maybe this can fly along with it. Yep. So uh, if you uh, uh, are a, po- a, po- a politics junkie or just a, a fan of this specific kind of thing, uh, this podcast is for you. Please enjoy, uh, or otherwise listen to the P tape <laughs> with John DeMillo. Theatrical director, Don DeMillo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The P-Tape with Don DeMello. This is the only political podcast devoted exclusively to The P-Tape. We will discuss every aspect of the famous 
Donald Trump in Moscow with the prostitutes. P-tape. We will discuss it in intricate, exquisite, thorough, exhaustive, and loving detail. Everything you could ever want to know about the P-tape over the course of this podcast, you will find out. And there's a pretty good chance you're going to hear a lot of things that you didn't want to know at all. The P-Tape was produced at the Moscow Ritz-Carlton on November 9th, 2013. And the world learned about it on January 11th, 2017, which means as of this recording, it has been 1,543 days since the P-Tape was made and 392 days since we first heard about it. And we still have not seen it. 392 days we've known about this thing. How long must this go on? This is a national nightmare. To know that this tape exists and to not have access to it. This is like if NASA waited a year to release footage of the moon landing, which they did not do. They immediately said, this is what that looks like. As far as I'm concerned, you don't tell me that something like this exists and then not show it to me. That is cruel. So, folks, we're going to talk a lot about the P-Tape. That's all we're going to talk about on this podcast, just the P-Tape. But first, a few words about myself. I have spent the last 30 years as the director of the Radio City Music Hall Christmas Spectacular in New York City. It is a great show. You got your Santa Claus flying across the stage and your live nativity with the baby Jesus and the real camels and the donkeys and all of that crap. And the kids love it. They love it, but what really makes it a special show? It's got a little something for Daddy in there. Yeah, that's what makes it a nice show. I'm talking about those rockets. The beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous girls with the legs. They're all the exact same height, and they got the same big smile. And they come out of there, and they dance across the stage. That's just for Daddy. That's right, sweetheart. Get out there. Put your soldier suit on and dance for daddy. I spend a lot of time working with those girls. I make sure they look good and they do exactly as they are told. I am pretty tough on the rockets, but the results uh, speak for themselves. And people often ask me, Don, what happens to a rocket if she gets a little long in the tooth or if she mouths off or she misses a step or eats a candy cane? What do you do to them? Well, that's where my old friend Falcon comes in. Falcon is one of our co-hosts here on this podcast, helping us to discuss the P-tape each and every week. Falcon, hello, Falcon. You run a farm where the rockets go when they are no longer suitable for the stage. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Um, when you're done with them, you send them up to me. That's right. And then we put... We put on little shows in the barn, if you know what I mean. You do that. Do, do, you, you keep the girls nice and busy up oh, there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a working farm. Yeah, it and is. And the girls work the farm. They do? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Tell me, what's what's an average day like for a rocket? Like, let's say, you know, she had a candy cane and I caught her or something like that. And I, you know, put a bag over her head and stuff her into the refrigerated truck. And uh, she makes her way up there to the farm. What What's her life like from a day to day? Oh, well, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful existence. These these, these women have worked hard. Uh-huh. They've worked hard to, to, to do a good job for you. Yeah, yes, yes. And their reward is yeah. to then find themselves in a beautiful farm. A beautiful bucolic farm. In a place thing. that they do not know. Yeah. The longitude and latitude of which is unknown. Oh, interesting. And if they were to find, say, a compass uh-huh. or try and... Uh, 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 Fashion uh, one out of a, uh, out of a and needle a, and, yeah. and a magnet. <laughs> They would find themselves themselves unable. Really? Certain precautions have been made around the area of the farm to it make it a. a um, have you watched the uh, TV show Lost? Uh, I've heard of it. Okay, I'm so with it. that show exists on an island that is an unknown quantity. Okay, this farm is like that island. It is. Cannot find it on a map. The only way you can find it, accidentally crash into it on a plane. Okay? And 
you would regret that. You would regret that. Me, I know how to get there. Of course you do. And that's why you pay me the big bucks. Boy, oh boy. So you've taken steps magnetically to make it uncompassable. Oh, oh yes. It, it is, it is, it is. You cannot find it. Right. You cannot know it. You cannot hear it. You cannot see it. Is it shrouded in fog? Yes. It's there. It a, is shrouded fog in fog. Shrouded. But once you pass through the fog, yeah. boy, is it beautiful. Boy, is it beautiful. Isn't that something? You might think it is the Bermuda Triangle of Farms. Uh Uh-huh. Which it is in a way. In a way it is. In a way it is. Have you had people wander in accidentally? Oh, have we ever done? Of course we have. You have? Of course we have. And do you just say People out on a hike, Uh they get lost, they wander onto the farm. Yes. Guess what's for dinner? Whatever oh. these people who've wandered on decide to cook for us. Oh, I see. Because I they, I thought, yeah. in an effort to earn their keep for the night, are yeah. allowed to make all of us dinner. Well, that's very nice. And then we will ritually, yeah. systemically, take them apart. Mentally. Oh, okay. Until oh, they see. are ours to control. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. We break people down psychologically yes. uh-huh. until they are their baser selves, something oh. like an animal. Down to the li- you strip them down to you, the lizard brain. You have to make sure that these people understand they are not human oh. anymore. See, that's what I try to do with the rockets. I take a shortcut. I get them hooked on heroin a lot yep. of the time, and then yep. that's just sort of. I, I understand. You're, you're the in the sugar city. Daddy. You're in the city. You've got you've got different uh, different tools at your disposal. Plus, we got a show we got to put on, and uh, every November, you know, I don't have time to do what sounds like you're doing a very complicated psychological breakdown. Oh yeah, but mostly because I'm out on the farm, I've got time yeah, to waste. Got the only thing time. I'm worried about is the crops coming in uh-huh. and wolves getting to the girls. And uh, that does happen, from what I understand, from time to time. Well, okay. Thank you, Falcon, for running that down for us. Uh, thank you for having me. Very I'm thrilled to, to be hear. here, and I'm excited. Well, yes. Very excited to talk about this P-tape. We're going to talk about the P-tape. And as I have discussed many times with Falcon, the Radio City show uh, is creatively limiting to me. And so when I am not working on that, I do my own shows where I have complete creative control. And we tend to do uh, some pretty nice things for Daddy in those shows. And, uh, <laughs> I perform those shows out there at the Pasadena Fairy Tale Theater, typically between the hours of 1 and 4 in the morning, and the audience slips in through a second-story bathroom window, and these shows are very creatively satisfying. Indeed, we have a production up now of Jumanji in association <laughs> with a guy who has crushing gambling debts and works at the L.A. Zoo. We have some interesting animals and some very interesting girls. And our next guest, uh, our uh, just, fellow uh, host. I believe if yeah. I'm not wrong, but, yes. not to interrupt, but that yours is J-E-W Manji, right? That's right. Yeah. Jew Manji. Manji, and it's very controversial, mm. very mm. controversial, and has been popular with a surprising <laughs> subset of the population. Uh Anyways, my next uh, co-host here is one of the few theater critics in the world who truly gets what I'm up to. (laughs) He has seen every one of my productions and reviews them all for his zine, which you can find stapled to certain utility poles in and around Pasadena. He is a true patron of the arts. Please welcome Mal Backman. Uh, it's great to be back. It's been too long. Too ha- long. It's been a long... Mal, what have you been up to since... Because uh, now, I don't know if we want to get into the weeds on this, but we, the three of us all made a podcast pilot once before. Right. It was called Eye on Theater. We made a podcast history, I believe. Well, well we did. And I was, got a lot of compliments. Did you? It. Well, the podcast itself did not get picked up, but that ep- the pilot was aired. And there was a lot of talk like about it on Trucker CB radios. I transcribed oh, it... Put it out in my zine in a oh, three-part series, bo- Blockbusters. What's the name of the zine, by the way? I didn't have that. Uh, the Fifth Estate. The now, f- remember, that's that's a combination of the Fifth Estate being the meteor, uh-huh. and then, of course, the Fourth Wall of the theatrical. Oh, the Fifth Wall? Is no, that what it's you, called? The Fifth Wall? The, the Fourth fifth, Wall four, yeah. is a combination of the Fifth Estate. It should really be the 4.5th Estate. Yeah. But, you know. Another so it's the Fifth perhaps. Estate you know, and I don't the know. Fourth Wall. Yeah, I, you I, almost should call it the Ninth I love that. 
The ninth. The ninth. Estate. All right. Here, here to four. That's what it'll be called. <laughs> so you can find the ninth. Sta- are there particular uh, to utility poles that you try to get it onto? Because yeah, I know that it's, you, there's no other way to circulate this zine just due to the content. It literally cannot be circulated in any other way legally. I prefer telephone poles because they've got that kind of pitch or tar or, or that a creosote coming out of them that you can kind of seal it on there and it's harder to get off. Those last a little bit longer. That stuff yeah. has a kind of a cinnamon flavor. Flavor to it. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried that. I, I certainly have. I can I confirm that. It's on uh, telephone poles and railroad ties. It tastes a bit like it cinnamon. It is. It'll give you a little bit of a boost if you that's know That's right. I mean. They I call it the wino's molasses. Yep. That's right. That's true. <laughs> so uh, from time to time on this show, we will also evidently have life hacks. And that's um, one of them there. You can get a Mal, a, a question nice for you. Certainly. Uh, briefly. Uh, you bet. Is there a component of your zine that allows for people who can't read to read it? Absolutely. And, and what that comes from is the, the old staples on the telephone poles poke through and create a sort of absurdist braille. Ah, so you never know what you're going to read. You, you don't know. Great. That's part of the pleasure. Because you know what I helps me to read things is sharp bumps. I agree. Yeah. Again, here to four, more sharper bumps in the Ninth Estate. That's our promise. All <laughs> the news that's fit to stick through a hole. Well, as long as you continue to put uh, uh, flattering and beautifully written reviews of my productions in that zine. Uh, <laughs> I don't I, know I, how I could. I don't care what you call it. Uh, you have seen every one of my shows. That's uh, right. That's right. Uh, starting with uh, Beauty and the Beast, which was a very interesting production. Yeah. yeah. We went through a lot of beasts. Yeah, we did. What uh, what have you been up to since? Because I haven't seen you, I don't think, since we did the Ion Theater, which did not get picked up for God knows what fucking reason. Yeah, it's one of the great travesties of mankind, but yeah. you're doing important work well, now. Is, yes. I didn't think you could top yourself with yeah. the work you did in your theater, but now you're covering the P-tape. You're giving it its due. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, I've, uh, I've fallen on hard times. Oh, I no, was incarcerated no. for three years, of course. Oh, no. I had... Uh, um, I, well, I was doing a series of social gatherings, right? Uh-huh. They, these were. Have you ever had like a candle party or a Tupperware party where you sell the goods or the wares to other people to sell? Sure. So I you have a, a, a function in your home when yes. you've got the products and the people. Right. Well, I would have these parties, and I would. Yeah. I was called a Ponzi party, and I would uh-huh. give them Ponzi schemes to then forward on, in a sense. So the government took exception with that and said that uh-huh. I was involved in a Ponzi scheme. It's not true. You were selling you, Ponzi schemes. Yeah. Right. Smart. Merchandising. A very is smart all it move. is. It's a packet, comes with a laminated instruction sheet. Yeah. And that's all it was. Now, I did these parties for a while. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ponzi yeah, party? No, no, not Ponzi parties. Uh-huh. I get the people to come to what they think is a party. Yes. Because the thing I find is people that come to these houses, they come with money. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, now, yeah. I've uh-huh. basically, you know, funny games to the people who own the party. Okay. So then I own the house. I invite all their friends over Ah. for a party. Bing, bang, boom. I got all the money I want based on what they brought with them. Yes. I funny games the whole place. And what does I'm it mean to fun and games to play? Michael Haneke's funny, funny games. games. It's a yeah. Michael Haneke movie. Great. Don't worry about it. He remade oh, his I own film. Seen, <laughs> I haven't seen that. You should check it out. Oh, oh yeah. I watched it in prison. Don, i got to tell you, yeah. it's hilarious. Is it it's really good? good? It good. is hilarious. Yeah, it's, a, oh. it's a romp. And I know you don't traditionally love movies. I uh, know. I'm, I'm more of a theater You man. want the immediacy of the theater. <laughs> yeah, right. yes, yes. And I am currently living in a car, and it just makes it challenging to watch, to catch up with all of the television everyone's telling I get me it. about. I'm li- living it's in the back of a Mexican restaurant slash upholstery shop. Oh, at, interesting. In Altadena. Oh, nice. And, uh, uh, which is okay I, because it's, you know, every night you've got a new couch to lay on. It's getting shipped out or worked on. Or you can get a taco or an enchilada. I am currently living in yeah. a cave where bears are hibernating. Oh. Well, there's three of us just roughing it. I know. This is great. What now? Do you have some idea of when they're going to come out of hibernation? Because I, I think don't know. You don't want to be asleep there in the Very cave. Very true. In the I'm moment nervous that that about it. But they've been sleeping for a while. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the, what's the date? Where are we at right now? These bears are lazy. Yeah. Sounds like it. Well, this is, uh, we're doing this in January. And oh, so, you got uh, time. Yeah, but that's an interesting alarm clock you've set for yourself there, my friend. <laughs> well, good to catch up with you guys, and you let's too. let's you get too, into yeah. this. I'm going to tell you right now that I have never had any interest in politics whatsoever in my life. Never. Until I heard about this P-tape. I never voted. I never read a fucking newspaper. <laughs> My ears did perk up a little bit when I heard Don Trump say, grab him by the pussy. Mm -hmm. That was interesting to me. I thought, you know, this guy has an interesting platform. But... (laughs) 
Then when I heard about this P-tape, I uh-huh. says, Don, it's time to get off the sidelines and get involved. We got to see this thing. We got to talk about this thing and get involved in it and explore every aspect of it. And I should say, by the way, right up front that I do. I know Don a little bit, Don Trump. I've known him for a little. He's, no kidding. No. Well, he well he has come by the Radio City Music Hall many times, mostly just to hang out backstage. <laughs> we have a VIP area back there. It is very, very dark. And nobody has any fucking idea what goes on back there at all. <laughs> So I don't know what he's up to, and don't ask me. But you know, when he was being inaugurated, you remember the inauguration? Sure, oh, I sure. believe it was the most uh, number of people ever to attend an inauguration in history. It's yeah, the yeah. only inauguration that anyone has ever seen. Ir- yeah, irrefutably, irrefutably. And uh, he was trying to line up acts for that inauguration. You may recall, for a little while, it was just going to be him and a Marine choir. And he calls me up and he says, "You know, you got to bring me the Rockettes." And I says, "Don, no problem." And so I set up the Rockettes to perform at this thing, and a lot of the Rockettes said, but we don't want to go, we don't like him. And I withheld their heroin for uh, several days, and then I started to just very prominently walk around the halls of Radio City with a hot poker. And next thing you know, we put on a nice show, and uh, Don owes me one, but it hasn't gotten me a private screening of the P-tape, I'll tell you that yeah. right now. I have not seen it. You guys, now let's start off. You have not seen I have not seen it. I've been seen it. scouring seen. the dark web. You yeah. have. Scouring the dark web. Oh, and you're, you're, pre- you're pretty I, f- uh, well-versed in the dark oh, web. Oh, I spend 10, 12 hours a day just living on the dark web. What are some things you found on the dark web? Well, I'm not going to lie to you, okay. Don. I have access to almost any drug. Okay. Almost any drug. I've, 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 I've been buying, I don't know if you guys have heard about Bitcoin. Sure, uh, sure, cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Uh, crypto. uh, I've got a small fortune in cryptocurrencies okay, from right. selling uh, and buying things on the dark web. Oh, very nice. Now, I'm not going to lie. We've got stuff at the farm that is very valuable. Oh, really? What are you talking very about? What do you mean? What are you, you talking about? Uh, like, uh, I'm talking about stuff. I'm talking about. Uh, listen, if yeah. I told you I'm making a small fortune yes. selling used rocket oh, panties <laughs> on the dark web, you know, would you be surprised? You have all the luck. You're living on this no. farm that's basically the El Dorado city of gold. No one can find it. You're there. You've got everything you need. Some guys just have all the luck. Life or Riley. <laughs> you really, Life yes, that's true. You this put guy. it together beautifully. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, where were you when you first heard about the P-tape? I was watching one of my other P-tapes, and they were talking about it on there, of course, because this was the mother of all P-tapes. And so basically any P-tape, I would watch a P-tape or a P-tape reaction video, uh, and they would talk about it on there. But the thing is... I know some people involved with these, all right? And they're no longer with us. And really, what I'm told is, anybody that's seen this thing, it's like the movie The Ring. You put it on in two weeks, you're dead. I don't know how long it is in that movie because I don't watch J-horror. I find it racist, right? Sure, sure. So if you watch it, you die. So you have to be careful. So you're watching, just let me back up a bit because you're watching P-tapes. All day long. And then you're watching P-tape reaction tapes. Sure. And these are people... The camera is on the person watching the P-tape. Well, sometime a P-tape author will get his grandma to watch it, right, and set up a little webcam, and it's a, it's a real hoot. If you want to break from the intensity of a regular P-tape, yeah. go for the levity of a P-tape reaction with a grandma watching Oh, I see. It's sort of it's a It's kind of like content. the bloopers at the that's end right. of a Cannonball Run yeah, movie. That's right. There is one with Dick Clark before he passed as well. And oh. he's oh. just reacting? He's just reacting. What was his reaction, Just Dick? stoic. Stoicism. Not, didn't register. That was after the stroke. It, was after it, was, yeah, it was might have say. been after the death. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, I would love to watch corpses watch people pee on other people. I can get it for you. I'm, I'm surprised you haven't come interested. across it yet. I would, I'm very interested in the very pervasive rumor that the <laughs> Casey Kasem family, uh-huh. the reason they shipped him around the world before they actually, in, in fact, buried him oh. was so that he could be peed on in every country. My understanding is that's true. <laughs> I guys, Allegedly just, speaking. I am out of the loop on the hot pop culture, but Casey Kasem was shipped around the country before sure. he was Around the world. Sure around the world before the he was The children there. wanted to bury him. The ex-wife did not, so oh. she kept him above ground and kept moving him around like a like a, like a a nut under a cup in a game of three-card Monty. Like oh. Brigadoon or that castle and crawl mm-hmm. can't be found. <laughs> yes. You know? <laughs> and you're talking you're about just like, the, just like the castle and crawl. If you're not up on your Casey Kasem, I'm not I don't no expect crawl. you to be. Up. But I do know when you talk about Casey Kasem's wife, we're talking about Mrs. Chortelli. Oh, Jean Case, Jean Kasem, wasn't that her? Yeah, yeah. 
And that showed the Tortellis, right. which everyone uh, agrees was 10 times better than Cheers. That's for sure. Oh, so much that's better. Sure. I remember, Don, when I heard cases. about the P tape, yes. I was, uh, as you know, I travel almost exclusively by cargo ship. That's correct. I was on a cargo <laughs> ship. I was uh, somewhere in the in the Adriatic Sea, I believe. Okay. I was How in a do shipping you get to container. landlocked places? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Mel. Right. Mel, don't worry about okay. it. Okay, I have to ask the tough questions. But, I'm a journalist. But if, are See, you that's familiar? Why it's good to have you here to get. I've cracked. Are you familiar with the Fitzcarraldo, the story of the Fitzcarraldo? I the believe Fitz I am. Carraldo. What happens when you need to get to a landlocked sea is that you, men pick your boat out of the ocean. That's right. Up, oh, the Fitzcarraldo. Take it over a hill. It's Take it over that, a hill. Or the Kroll Castle. Yep. It's the only two ways. Okay. Anyway, yeah. some of these uh, crew guys were talking about this tape, oh. and I said, "There is no way." Uh-huh. That this tape exists. They insist that it did and that they'd seen a clip. You're kidding me. They acted out the clip for me. Oh, my God. The clip God. they acted out was yes. the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So they didn't really? see the whole thing, just a clip. They had Let only seen a this. clip. Yep. Are they missing any of their limbs? The, oh, yes. See? You uh-huh. die if you watch the whole thing. You lose a part of your body if you watch a clip. Yes. And uh, each of them said that they had felt as though a piece of their soul uh-huh. had been erased. Really? Yeah. Well, I would take that deal. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds okay. Would you, gentlemen, knowing, as we, I believe, have established here, that when you watch the Don Trump Moscow November 9th, 2013 P-tape Ritz-Carlton, you will die. Would you watch it knowing that? <clears throat> so you're go ahead, Mel. Well, I would, uh-huh. and here's why. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm a journalist, right? Yes, you are a journalist. And if I'm going to die, uh-huh. I'm not going to tell you who I voted for. I'm not into into politics because I'm a journalist. No. I can't say it, of but course. I can watch that and I can report on it, uh-huh. and I can tell you that. I got a degree in dramaturgy when I was in jail from the University of Arizona or Phoenix or whatever it is. Yeah, good for you. And so I am qualified, uniquely Uh qualified. A, I know theater. B, I know depravity. Yeah, yeah. So I think no one's as suited to report on this as me. And I would do it even if it meant my own death. You know, yes. I I didn't even think of the P-tape as theater, but it is, isn't it? They put on a show. Oh, it's the final show. Especially it is because they don't know they're being recorded. Well, and we're going to get into all of that shortly. But let me just define our terms here. And I don't want to read to you from the Steele dossier, but I have it here. Uh (laughs) Yes, Trump's conduct in Moscow included hiring the presidential suite of the Rich Carlton Hotel, where he knew President and Mrs. Obama, whom he hated, had stayed on one of their official trips to Russia, and defiling the bed where they had slept by employing a number of prostitutes to perform a golden showers, yes. in parentheses, urination, show in front of him. And the hotel was known to be under FSB control with microphones and concealed cameras. Now, also, by the way, I looked up the definition of golden showers because this is just something we have to clear up. A golden shower is slang for the practice of urinating on another person for sexual pleasure. Now, so the only, this is just a minor point because there's a lot of confusion about this. We cleared up right now. No one is saying that Donald Trump got peed on. That's not part of this. It was a golden shower show that he arranged to take place on the bed and for, we believe he was only a spectator. At, at best, he's guilty of being an innovative producer. And yes, absolutely. And a show that needs, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. a director. That's oh, right. Oh, boy. Who knows how, how willy-nilly it was, you know? Yeah. Who was calling the shots? Uh, who directed this this Golden Shower show? This is a show that could have benefited mm-hmm. from your involvement, Don, tenfold, twentyfold. Well, I wish that I had gotten that call. I would have flown to Moscow to direct this performance. And I Oh, are you allowed to leave the country now? Delighted. Well, <laughs> not in the sense that I have a passport, meaning that I do not, meaning that it has been Should you need to, taken from me. I have Chinese boats ready to yeah. take you wherever you want to go, my friend. Uh, that sounds very, very good. And I do sometimes get out there on the water. Some of my productions are conducted out there on I have connections waters. with the Chinese and Somali pirates uh-huh. that will take you anywhere you want to go. I'd okay. like as long as you allow them to say, I am the captain now. Oh. <laughs> That's fine with me. 
Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for that lovely offer, and I may very well take you up on that, and I will get myself to Moscow. And I think we should, should this podcast get picked up, we should all take a trip to Moscow. Oh, yes. And we should get deeper into it. But we are, uh, we are going to get deeper into it. We have two... Exciting and important guests on the show uh, here in our inaugural episode of the P Tape with Don DeMillo. And we are going to explore different aspects of this when we come back from a brief break. Uh, we are going to talk to uh, a landlord who is an expert on, uh, shall we say, domestic surveillance, oh. who can weigh in on uh, the cameras and what they can do and how that works. And as I say, we are getting in depth. On the P tape. Okay, uh, we will be right back after this message from a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the P tape with Don DeMello. I am here with my dear friend Falcon. Whoop whoop. Oh, and also Mal Backman. Woof woof. Oh, interesting. I wasn't expecting either of those, but I appreciate them as contributions. And we are discussing, as we will each and every week on this podcast, the P tape. This is uh, that is our only topic of discussion. Uh, the P-Tape, you know, because a lot of political podcasts are uh, tap dancing around the P-Tape. They're avoiding talking about the P-Tape. They talk about salacious compromise and whatnot, and we are we're going right at it. I want to know yeah. how hydrated were these girls. How right. high, well, these I want to know what color was that pea. What kind of vegetables had they had? Yes. Yeah. Well, right. uh, perhaps our, uh, our uh, second guest today can weigh in on some of that stuff. But, well, we have a very exciting second guest, and our first guest is also very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bob Fredericks. Bob Fredericks, hello. Hi, guys. How are you? I Great. love your work. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Now, Bob, you are mm -hmm. a... I, yeah, go ahead. You, you're a property owner. Is that yes. Correct? Yes, okay. Yeah, it basically just means that uh, your money I've acquired, I've, I've bought oh, properties okay. with just... Yep houses yes. of where people stay. Uh -huh. That's how that works. It's just a property and I'm the, uh, you know, I have the deed or whatever. And you have the deed and uh, you own multiple properties. And I you, own multiple you properties. You yourself do not uh, take up residence in all of these properties. So people no. who live there are paying you money to live in the house oh, that you own. Nope. Yes, they are. Through, through a series of... Um, you know, they have no idea who I am. Oh, I, uh, I have various mustaches, whatever oh, it is. Oh, you do? Well, just, just various disguises. So when Costumes. I, costumes right. is a great way to put it. Yeah. yeah. A great way to put it. Yeah. Uh -huh. But they're all. Better, it's more neutral than disguises. Yes. And specifically, yeah. they are all mustaches. Yes. All yes. various, all, all various it is is mustaches. mustaches. Do you have different characters with these men? Absolutely, oh, I have different voices. Would you like to hear I'd one? Love, love to hear. Love to hear. Oh, can you give us first, quick, the the address? Oh, maybe you don't want to actually. Maybe I don't. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Well, you will describe evolved, from what I've heard, Falcon. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, it would so, be helpful if you described the mustache before going into the voice. Okay, yeah. this is a little, uh, a little brown mustache. A niven. Oh, yeah. A niven. <laughs> I don't name them like I you. do. I, I, I've been listening to you guys, and you guys have a lot of references. My only reference is the block I'm on, what's in front of me. I have no idea. Oh, interesting. And they, an artist. I appreciate that. Artist. I don't know, but I, I, don't, I don't relate to anything that goes on in the culture except what I own. He's yeah. humble. He's humble. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. I don't know if I don't know what I am, but I have so, so yeah. the first character I'll do for you, uh -huh. it's a little brown mustache, but okay. there's like a divot in it, like he injured, he was injured. You oh, know what like I'm saying? Like a hair lip. Like a hair lip? It's sort of like, like that. So it's like a scar in my where mind, hair doesn't grow. Right. In my mind, it was in a conflict of some sort. Sure. Like uh -huh. uh, he he was uh, either fighting to the death That's right. uh -huh. with someone who owed him money good, or good. yes, or he was in a war. But anyway, it doesn't look good. He's got a, a really bad divot on his Clint hand. Clint Eastwood has one of those in his beard and Vanilla Ice has one in his eyebrow. 
Uh, not familiar with eyes a person. So been Mal, through some scrapes. Mal yeah. is an expert in hair divots. That's right. Uh huh. Absolutely. Of any kind. Joaquin Phoenix has Joaquin. a natural one. Of I was course. thinking yes. of Joaquin. Yeah, sure. If he was to grow a mustache, it would look like this. Joaquin Phoenix. That's right. Is that right? Who has also been to the VIP area backstage at the Radio City Music Hall, which is very, very dark. All right, go ahead, Bob. You were going to tell. No, okay, so mean, that's the mustache, and let's hear the voice, please. Yeah, and it's it's just something to throw the people. People who uh, stay in my buildings. Do you and want, just, would you like one of us to be the person in the building for you? Would that help at all? Uh, sure, if you'd like to. Okay. All right, hey, why don't you say, hey, uh, why are you coming into my apartment? Okay, sure, here we go. Hey, why are you coming into my apartment? Wonderful. The thing is, is I, I don't really answer them. I just go in <laughs> oh. because I have the deed and stuff like that. Okay. So and that, that is a character, though. Uh, the character, the reason I'm saying it's a character yeah. is because if I do have to, you know, utter anything, it'll just be like, oh, I can't. Uh, uh. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, very Smart. small. Smart. Small is best when you're dealing in uh, um, this kind of Less thing. is more less in yes. guerrilla theater. You're not on a stage. You're in real right. life. You can't telegraph it. You have to let them fill in the lines. And people, wow. with, with your words, I I could all you're giving people is information that makes them feel more comfortable. Uh, well, the lack of information keeps them on their toes. That's right. I, yeah, I yeah. think so. I so, think so. So, Bob, you are a landlord, yes. Yes. Okay. I and, think, yeah. And the reason that we have brought you here to weigh in on the P-tape in particular uh, mm -hmm. is that you— uh, 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 well, why don't you explain it? You, you could probably explain it better than anybody, but you, you have some particular expertise uh, on uh, the manner in which this P-tape might have been recorded and whatnot. Well, you know, I have cameras uh -huh. that are placed all over every one of my properties. Okay. And I'm talking about in... You know, the, the intimate areas uh -huh. as well as, you know, uh, they're in the foods. I mean, I get, I get as you intense. You put cameras in the food? In the foods in the refrigerator. Wow. Like, in other words, they go shopping. Let's yes. say it's person A, I'll call her. Okay. She goes shopping. And her and name is person A? Person. What nationality. Persona. She. Persona. Persona. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. a Bergman. That's Swiss. Yep. Okay. Anyway. It's a beautiful name. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I, well, I'll be able to get cameras in their food. Let's say they get hummus. They go shopping. They Let's go say they get hummus. Let's Ralph's say they get hummus. Yeah. Yeah. They buy some hummus. Right. Yeah, that's not a Ralph's thing. That's more uh, Trader Joe, I sure. think. Trader Joe's. I mean, Ralph's has a section for that, but look at it. Have you seen it? I have seen it. It's the, just awful. It's terrible. It's, it's a, always, yeah. Just too, like too, a ready whip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Too right. many ingredients. I'm a, I'm a John's guy myself. You Smart head over move. to John's. I go to John's. Do you know where the hummus is Loose in tubs, uh, yeah, and yeah. there's a there's a bit of a spatula you can just like scoop you it right scoop out. It out. You got to get past the first like three inches is all crust. Yep, you scoop right that. through those first three inches. You uh, can get three bites before they start yelling. Real at quick, you. I'll tell you what I do. I go in there with one of those mortar belts, you know, that you use to lay mortar. Yeah, I just slap it right in. Oh there yeah, smart. And then walk out. They think I'm a mason, and I walk home the whole time eating a hummus like from in a the trowel. masons. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Freemason. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> That's brilliant with the, with the mortar belt. But just a word to the wise: there are cameras in You'd all know. John's foods. Oh, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. cameras in oh, all John's great. food. I think we're well, aware of that. Got but plenty of footage of me jerking off. <laughs> Hello, at John's. Oh yeah. Uh, but Jesus. the response time between you know wherever whoever it is that's watching these things by John. the time they get to you, you can do a fair. It's amount. all John. John. It's all just John he watching runs the, the videos. Up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can get away with a lot. But anyway, so now you they they have purchased the hummus, and you will go ahead well, and you will get into their apartment. And uh, bury a camera in that hummus? Yes. Well, uh -huh. it, what what I have done is uh -huh. each apartment, there is, you know, tra there's either a trap door or a uh -huh. ceiling fan that oh. I can work my way through. Interesting. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, I have to do it very quietly, uh -huh. different hours. But I like to put mini. The, the technology is so amazing right now, yeah. uh, Don. Yeah. 
uh, cameras are so small uh-huh. that often I will either snort one by mistake Whoa. or oh. snortable cameras. Wow. No, I mean they're so tiny. Right? Yeah. yeah. Are you no. aware? I mean, I guess no, this is I why you know. brought I, me. Yes, yes. I mean, you're busy with whatever you guys do, which sounds intense, but um, they yes. they are making cameras so small, oh, and yeah. in other cases, and this is the element of surprise, so large. Sometimes an entire wall oh, will be no. a recording. A, a visual recording device. Isn't That's that a smart bit of camera. Wow. Where are they? What, you see, because you know what I'm saying? Most people are looking for right. uh, tiny, tiny cameras. Right. Thank you. I was looking for the word. Lens, a tiny, tiny, yeah, teeny, but tiny. But wall. if you make the entire right. wall. The you? entire wall is a camera. Isn't that I'll brilliant? Isn't as hiding in plain sight? Bob, you know, I have a hiding question. in plain sight. It's, it's all well and good that you've got these, these, this technology, but what are you mm. doing with it? How's the artistry? What's the cinematography like? Are you shooting low angles? I never oh. see voyeuristic cams at a low angle. People don't worry so much about the artistry. Right. Right. You're right. What do you, how about you? Right. I got to it out. I, I just want to... I just want to be able to get either if it's straight on, like if it's a wall camera, yeah. it's great if the master wall, shot. It's a master shot. If the camera's in a piece of fruit yeah. that's about to be eaten, oh uh, dear. You know, I will see lips, I will see tongue, I w- and then the camera then goes through. And have you seen uh, the movie where the people get miniaturized? Inner space. Thank you. Inner Space, one of my favorite movies because it's oh, a lot of what I do. One I, of the single best movies ever made. That's that right. is a I think good one. Yeah. Uh, Randy Quaid it. hit his stride. Oh, yes. In the that best movie. of the Quaids. That's right. I would actually argue, because I think it's Dennis Quaid, I would argue right. that movie would have been better if it yeah. was Randy Quaid and Rick Moranis. Randy Quaid and Rick. Listen, you You're could right. pitch the, okay, the uh, remake. I give it a shot. Yeah, Randy is an interesting fellow. I uh, I have frequent phone calls with Randy Quaid. Oh, of course, of, of course. I have a particular phone that is only for talking. He to Randy is Quaid. very active on the dark web. Oh, I, I have no doubt about it. <laughs> he and his wife. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. So, so these people anyway, are swallowing your cameras in many cases. And I'll and, and I'll be able to see uh, inside them. Know what kind of tenant. I'm dealing with, I mean, literally oh. on a mic, micro level. Has uh, it ever happened that you have caught, uh, you know, a tumor or a bleeding ulcer or something like that? Yes. For, yes. You, yes. And I'll alert them right away through a, a, a sensing. It's, it just goes off and, and flashes. Do they ask uh, you, how do you know I have this? Oh, no, no. What what I do is let them know anonymously uh, through a device. You see, my, and this is why my properties are so expensive. Yes, they, it sounds like the budget for this must be astronomical. Smart home. It is. This is all done through the Amazon Echo, a very large Amazon Echo. Not the Echo Dot, which is smaller. Much smaller. Mm-hmm. But a large Amazon Echo. What do you mean? Have you uh, trash sort of, can sized? Have you hacked into uh, an Amazon Echo so that you're hearing it instead of Jeff Bezos? Yeah, I have a friend. I have a computer friend who's uh-huh. very heavy, a very heavy set computer guy, a very he, large, just heavy set and doesn't go anywhere. And 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 uh-huh. he's brilliant. And yeah. he just he. You can get so smart. If you just don't move your body. See that? Right. You know, we're Apparently. wasting so much intelligence being mobile. Isn't right. that interesting? The, because you don't think about how much work the brain has to do. It's wasting all this time moving your legs, yeah. getting stuff around, mm-hmm. you know. Uh-huh. You're, the, 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 the real smarties are the people who are out there not moving. That's oh. right. Your brain's really a pilot. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if you're going to be doing other things, you can't work two jobs. You know, you mm-hmm. get strung out. Right. Right. People who travel the world just have travel tips, whereas guys like this. Yes. And yeah. you know what proves this? Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. The guy yeah. cannot move and is the smartest man in the world. He Absolutely is the proof right. in the pudding. Also, I'm always a fan of people whose last name yes. are raptors. Wow. Oh. Are predatory birds. Sure. Yes. Sure. Uh, and not only like that, yourself, I guess. But the, oh, hey. I, well, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. just thought of that. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, no one knows glad to be your help. last name. It's very interesting. You have declined to share with me your last name for years I and years I would now. rather not. Oh, all right. All right. But anyway, so so going from micro uh, to macro, um, I, I do it through. I, I Yes, I, I do alert people to illnesses. Now, that's the Now, bena- sorry, Bob, benevolent. to interrupt. Yeah. I know micro, the host of Dirty Jobs. Who is macro? <laughs> Um, well, macro is, you've heard of macaroni, macaroni, right? Well, I macaroni. Think I think we've all heard of macaroni. Sure, sure. Macro is just a, a street oh, slang got it. term uh, that got was it. developed You're thinking of by- macro, the host of clean jobs. <laughs> Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. I have long argued that dirty jobs does not require a host. Anyways, <laughs> really weighing in on the hot topics. And timely. And timely. <laughs> Sorry, uh, no, sorry, I got no, us it's off quite track. Right. Now, so now, in in a facility mm. such as the Moscow Ritz Carlton, oh, if go. you are the FSB and you want to make sure that in the presidential suite where the most prominent guests are going to be staying, you absolutely know everything that they're up to. Mm-hmm. Where would you put your equipment, and what would you expect to capture? What are the angles we can look forward to when we finally get a look at this P tape? What is it going to look like? What is it going to sound like? What are your guesses? Well, I'm going to guess that uh, they they got everything, okay? Yeah, okay. I'm going to guess that they got everything, and they got it good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And okay. if they were smart, uh, they had, you know, the prostitutes or whatever you call them. Um, prostitutes. Uh, yes. Oh, God, I was going to say late. I mean, I was brought up right. We, we called them ladies of the evening. Oh, I thought you whores. were looking for proper names. Ladies but of the evening Christian is a subset of prostitutes. Right. There are other prostitutes you can get at other times of the day, my friend. <laughs> okay. But if uh-huh. these people were really doing their homework, they had cameras in the prostitutes. Now you Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you get a POV shot, an action shot of the dismissal. POV the- is very big in a lot of these right. uh, dark web uh, pornography okay. shoots. Yeah, it's right. like a, a found footage P-tape. Now, this is breaking mm. new ground. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, Don, can you imagine that if mm. you actually, I mean, I don't know how many um, urine, I call them urine tapes. I don't know how many oh, urine fancy, tapes. Very fancy. I don't know. I just like to break it down to uh-huh. what my my dad called it. Oh, that's nice. But anyway, could you imagine if there was camera, uh-huh. if there was a camera yeah. that flowed with the urine. Like, in other words, flowed with the urine. I see what you're saying. No, I mean, this is really no, something that can be done. And also virtual... Re- now, I'm, if I'm pretty yes. sure that this P-t- P-tape was done in 3D, like virtual no, reality no, glasses no, are going to be on. able to be used with this. So that's oh. like being in the boat as you're yes. going over the water. we got to get this thing. This is tremendous. Yes. I mean, I am so glad we brought an expert on this kind of surveillance onto our show because you're taking, saying things I never would have imagined that you're saying maybe how it works is that this prostitute drinks a camera. It is yes. processed through yes. her organs. Yes. It, it, through She's her alerted kidneys. of any diseases. Uh, in the process, yes. And then the camera uh, finds a home in her bladder. And then when mm-hmm. it is time, she will urinate out the camera and we will have the urine's eye view oh. of the entire Now, my question is, drug. is that just one of the angles oh, we yes, are able to right. cut between? Yeah, now, I would hope so. Live, hope like so. a TV broadcast, or is it edited in post? These oh, are the things yes. I want to know. Is that's this footage point. that's being sent away, or are people having to change cards and or tape? Are there dailies? Is there a control room truck parked outside where they're cutting yeah. live? Right. Yes to all of shots? it. Oh. Do you remember <laughs> yes that to all of episode of Nova where they did an in like a copulation shot. Do you remember this? Oh, I remember mm-hmm. that. That was academic. Yes. This I... is this, but titillating. And this is where mm-hmm. we finally put the medium where it needed to be. Yes. It also yes. brings yes. us a degree of functionality uh, to understanding what's at play because no longer are we putting ourselves in only the position of the person watching yes, the or the person yes. being. We are now part of the P itself. We are the yes. urine. Yes. We are the urine. We yes. are the urine. We, we, Which is why I think your interest is justified yes. um, in this. Oh, I, I mean, was not looking for justification <laughs> of my interest. You could also, you could I even no say qualms. You could, what? The, you could even say you're in the 
the urine. Beautiful. Now we're talking. Well, you that's know. how you would market it. And when it comes out and when it has a theatrical release. Which it will. Which it will. That would be a yeah. good, as they say, log line. You're in the urine. Imagine that. The log the line. Yeah, that's go a whole other tape. It's a double feature. Double it's feature at the 90 drive-in. minutes of Russian dash cam vids. Oh, yes. <laughs> you go get some uh, poutine or popcorn. You come back for the main feature. Ah, Ooh, that is- I would love it if we could first start with those Russian kids who 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 ascend to tall towers pointlessly. Oh, are you talking about the parkour? Not parkour. They just climb and stand. Uh, They're yeah, not we'll, jumping. We'll do a little short, like a let's all go to the lobby or some shit like that. Yeah. And we'll go straight to the Russian dash cam vids. Yes, we'll take a yes. break. And then the main, the headline, yep. the Euro, yep, yep. urine, urine. Well, <laughs> listen, it's very hard to find an audience for international fair in the United States film. <laughs> market, but uh, I think this might just crack it. Now, uh, Bob, they say that this video has been used to blackmail Donald Trump for this and that and that. Mm. Have you ever tried to uh, use your videos in that way? I know that you've used your videos to alert people to various health problems. Have you also used it uh, for blackmail? And how does Yes, it yes. I've used it uh, to ruin lives. Oh, and, wow. Um, that's, wow. you know, that's if there are a couple of, you know, if there are more than three days... Uh, in arrears, um, oh, which is I a see. camera I use. <laughs> it's a camera called an arrears, arrears camera? Arrears yes. camera? Oh, yep. who, who makes yes, that? Yes, if they're more than three days in yeah. arrears That's also a and great, I see reason great to ruin their life, I, I will take that footage mm. and I will put it up, you know? So the way this plays out is that if somebody is three days late on their rent, there's no discussion. No, you in arrears. Ruin three days. Their lives. Well, yes. Bob, I have a question for you. You've got all of these cameras in these homes. Mm. When you set out to, when you, when day two that someone is late, you know Mm. day three is the day that's going to drop. Day, Do you start editing? (laughs) Do you go into an edit bay and do you start editing together all the footage to make a compelling narrative? I have a couple of kids who will cut it up for me. Are you trying to tell a story with this video or are you just trying to hurt with He's the an most, artist. With well, the most insane if I can in, hurt graphic and, imagery. If I can hurt and tell a story, I, I will do that. It's, a, uh, it's art with a message. That's I've the se- best art. I've I mean, seen a few of your videos oh, on the you. dark web. Thank you. I do, oh, nice. I've, I've seen nice. them. Thank you. And I do want to say uh, they are compelling right. stories. They are. See that. It's yeah. not just a bit of revenge or a bit of, uh, 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 it's not schlocky. It's, uh-huh. it's, it, 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 there's a heart to it. That's thank right. you. I got the Time Life collection of your work. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I didn't know that was even a magazine anymore, but thank you. I thought oh, it was the, Time Warner. No, uh, the, the Time Life DVD set. They're know. still around? Sure. Oh, good. <laughs> sure they are. Well, I think I'm that's glad great. they are. I think it's very respectful to ruin somebody's life with something that you put a little work into. Yeah. And I, 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 I think that's... I and also you. all I my you. properties have a pipe organ oh. and uh, there are right. cameras when a certain, uh, when, you know, a certain uh, hymn oh. is played. So, oh. well, well, now yeah. this is very Wait interesting. The pipe organ so camera? You're, you're, the pipe you're organ saying camera interests you? that all the apartments in your buildings mm-hmm. at any point can just start hearing a pipe organ that is piped throughout the house. Or there's a That's pipe right. organ there, and when they play a specific hymn, both, oh, both. Oh, it's like I didn't know if all of it. All of it. You were in a control room playing a pipe. Organ. Yes, <laughs> got it. So each apartment has, I'm assuming, a stove and a refrigerator, pipe and stove, a, a pipe stove. Oh, you a got stove a refrigerator pipe and a pipe in there. Stove. There's also a stove, uh, a pipe. Pipe stove top hat. Pipe stove top and a stove top pipe hat. A stove top and hat. A pipe. A stove pipe. Oh, yes. Just a pipe. A pipe. You also a pipe. Yep. <laughs> and then a pipe organ. And a pipe organ. So these are just sort of the amenities. And they're all cameras in in one form or another sure, that are I mean. designed to ruin uh, a life if there's more than three. Days. How much are you spending every year on this? Uh, yeah. Close to a billion. <laughs> Close to a billion. Close oh to a goodness. billion dollars a year. Yes, but, you know, I hustle. I hustle out there. Well, I have a dry cleaner. <clears throat> What's interesting? Oh, you do? Oh, so you're it's all, very expensive. Oh, so oh, you're losing money on this business, but you, you, you're funding it from another Where business. Where is he? These are I very expensive I gotta rentals. Ask. These I are gotta very ask. expensive rentals. In a way, mm-hmm. 
it, we are talking with Bob, Bob Fredericks here, who is uh, just as much a real estate mogul as our president, Donald Trump. Isn't right. that interesting? Wow. I had not made that connection. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you. Escaping. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you have secret passages within the house that you can go around and like adjust the cameras and do maintenance? So yes, and they're pretty uh, basic, and you've probably seen them in the movies, but if you take out a Webster. certain book mm-hmm. in a bookshelf, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll be able to get in. But only until you wait. Take but out. if the person oh. takes the book out of the bookshelf, that would I, make I'm it not going to say that for on you. the air. I'm Can not going to say, say what that. Book on, it is Catcher in the Rye. Ah. Okay, on, in all the apartments, Catcher in the Rye. Is it's, that a favorite book of yours? Uh, you said it. And Never Catcher heard of in the Rye. So huh? is it is it it or Catcher in the Rye? Oh no 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 no. Stephen it's, King's it. Yeah. It's oh. <laughs> it's awful. Okay. Um, but we uh, Catcher in the, the Rye. book Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. I don't you like didn't care it. for the book. I it. didn't like it. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, Catcher in the Rye was uh, the it of its era. That's right. And now uh, that's well put. You're welcome. We're going to take a little break now. And when we come back, uh, Bob, I hope you'll stick around. We're going. Oh, to, absolutely. Uh, we're going to crack this thing uh, wide open. Uh, probably, we're going to talk to someone who has an extraordinary level of expertise on the subject of. The P-Tape, which is what we are discussing in great detail and total depth on this podcast. Uh, So uh, we'll be right back after a word from another sponsor. (laughs) Hello, this is Andy Daly, and you're listening to the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. If you can't wait to hear more episodes, you can binge listen to the entire season now on Stitcher Premium. For a free month of premium, go to stitcherpremium.com slash Andy and use promo code Andy. Welcome back to the P-Tape with Don DeMello, and please do patronize those sponsors. Uh, well, folks, uh, this is very exciting. I am here uh, with uh, my co-host, Falcon. Uh, we have learned a lot uh, so far, and also Mal Backman, uh, Mal, uh, and uh, Bob Fredericks, uh, landlord and an absolute expert on uh, cameras and surveillance, uh, and we have learned a great deal about the P-Tape and... Uh, Listen, I I wanted to see the P-Tape before we got started. Now I am dying to see the P-Tape, and I am all the more infuriated that we have not yet seen it. It is an outrage. Uh, But we are now going to talk to somebody who uh, has an extraordinary level of expertise. Sweetheart, what is your name now? What is it again? Irina Gutsikova. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What a beautiful name. Oh, boy. Irina, and Irina, where uh, in the world are you from, sweetheart? I'm from this, uh, like, Kiev, but not Kiev. It's someplace very close to there. I don't like to say, for reasons of privacy. You don't want to say where exactly, if, but Kiev, and that is a place... It's like, it's a place like Kiev. It's a place like Kiev, and that is in, in Russia. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, Irina, you, 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 we talked a little bit before the show. You do feel, you know, fairly comfortable telling us what it is that you do for a living over there in Russia. I'm like for consultant. Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> consultant. Like right. the Carter Page is in news a lot. I do something like this for diplomats yeah. and things like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, they want entertainment or, you know, companionship, yes. and they consult with me, and so I uh. establish what is good Pairing. So somebody will come to Russia uh-huh. and they want some entertainment. They want to have a nice time. Right. And they would contact you. And so let's say that I'm, you know, someone like that. And what, what do I, I what, what do you say to me? What's our conversation like? Well, again? first out of uh-huh. gate, I say, you know, uh-huh. we, we do custom P-tips. <laughs> You come right out with that. That's early in the conversation. Oh, this is cultural thing. It's, oh, I it's, see. In, in Russia, it's like, um, it's like ballet. Oh, uh, so the ballet is something that in the United States, maybe the average person has seen the ballet once or twice on TV. Very unusual to go there in person. In Russia, you live with it all the time. The ballet yeah. is like bowling in Russia. And uh, everybody's is, in a ballet league. Every- <laughs> Every working class schmo is in a ballet. League. And, Saturday nights are rock and, also, and ballet. Uh-huh. Also for Russian children, yes. uh, part of the, how you say potty training oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah. Um, uh-huh. is doing p tape. This is a oh. question that I often have okay. had: Are there Russian children? Oh, that's a good question. Oh Very yes, question. many, there are many, 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 many. There are. Children. You many, never see many pictures are of them. small yeah. because they don't have a lot to eat, but yeah. they're very tiny. 
So just as in the United States where a, a, a woman will become pregnant and give birth to a baby, which then becomes a child and then, you know, so on and so forth. Well, this the, also happens in Russia? This is a Russian, Russian nesting dolls, but it's a biological thing where they're, they're sort of like the generations inhabiting their mothers yeah. and their ancestors. Yeah. So how and you so could have three You can tell right like now. people who are very tiny. Uh, yeah. They come from a long family line because there's more tiny, you know, the nesting right. dolls. The smaller right? they are. The smaller they are. The longer their lineage. The longer, uh, yes. Right. So a hundred years ago, yeah. Russians on average were like 14 feet tall. Sure. And now over time, sure. they're just becoming yes. smaller and like, smaller. Like Yeti. Uh, like Yeti. That I makes, know a little bit a about this sense. because I study the Russian masters. You Stanislavs, Casey, oh, Mexico. Sure. Well, yeah, oh, check yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So, yeah. so you're saying that in the same way that the ballet is much more common in Russia, so too is the P-tape. So yeah. much so that it is a, a, a tool in potty training for children? Yes. Uh, at a certain ah, point, that is it's interesting. rite of passage ah, that I you see. stop P-tape and you just do it solo. Like you, oh. In the beginning, you can watch back. Analyze, uh, you know, this was good, this was not good. Right, of course. Right, mommy, daddy, they take you through it. Yeah, um, yeah, and then it makes right a lot. Of, and it's funny that we don't do that here because it yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. If you're learning how to urinate, and to do put, to, yeah, to tape it and study the tape. You put kids in front of screen. Uh, how old I, were you when you uh, you did your first solo flight? I was one. I was very wow. advanced, very oh, okay. advanced. Wow. And they pick you young Impressive. over there. Yeah. They can tell what you're good at. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is to me where. It's an example of how we as a country are soft, right? Yeah, you know, because yeah, we yeah, are yeah, coddling yeah. our youth with right. diapers. That's We're right. encouraging them to just fill their diapers with yeah. their pee it's rather than use idea. their pee. Yeah, it's like for baby. Yes, yes. yes. babies aren't babies. Do you know they're smart? Yeah, babies are not babies. I agree with you. In, and in I Russia, that's why I ask. In yeah. Russia, a lot of uh, my understanding is that a, a child is graduates to being an adult at age two. Yeah. Is that about right? Is that yeah. when you're pretty much expected to get some yeah. kind of a job? It's hard life. But as I say, you uh, you arrange uh, entertainment for yeah. uh, visiting for what? High rollers and whatnot? Uh, yeah. Uh, and for presidents, for presidents and things yeah. like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, the Donald Trump, he comes Trump, yeah. over <laughs> and uh, you were seeing soft earlier, yeah, yeah. Mr. Falcon. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not only place oh. that is soft. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay. Oh, what are you trying to tell us here? That, Don that, that he's yeah. very, he has a soft side and it's underneath his pants. Uh, <laughs> I get it. All right. He has a hard time with the boners. <laughs> Don, are you still making those uh, boner pills? I am. Uh, uh, yes, that's right. I am. I am making. I yeah. I you make a, them. I have a side business: the bathtub boner pills, and we, you know, I, he, he grinds down bathtubs grind them up, yeah. and he uh, puts them into capsules, porcelain, and the specific kind of paint that is used in uh, bathtubs. And uh, boy, oh boy, if that won't give you a boner, and nothing will, my friend. Ground up bathtubs. <laughs> uh, and I, yeah, I've been selling them, you know, and I'm, well, it's a long story, but I got Where do you get the tubs from? DA, DEA after me. Where do I get the tubs from? <laughs> Just junkyards and whatnot. It's oh, a, these are junkyard tubs all oh, the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, so it's junkyard boner tubs. Junkyard boner Economy. Pills. Yeah, economy. And it's they a, are that's sold. That's a better way to pre They are American-made, uh -huh. American-made, oh, sure. American sold in standard America standard in standard. all junkyards across America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the place to get them, in the junkyard. You, you know, Don, yeah. Junkyard uh -huh. Boner. Junkyard Boner. It's a big song. I remember Junkyard. It's a big song in Russia. Oh, it is? Uh. Junkyard Boner. <laughs> hey, spit a lot. <laughs> Were you wow. going to say you thought it was a wrestler? <laughs> No, no, Junkyard uh, I thought it was a guy that used to hang around, <laughs> the guy who used to hang around the peep shows, sure, Times Square Junkyard sure. Boner. Oh. Yeah, but he was well, an, he was eventually became an angel. He was a donor, and he, he was the one that was donating the most yes, to the yes, theater yes, club, yes, and we put right. his name on a plaque. We did. We put Junkyard Boner. But well, anyway, well, I'm glad he to died. hear that. He passed song. away. Yes, he died. He had uh, a, a long list of causes of death, as I recall. Anyways, uh, so from what I understand, it was five prostitutes who yeah, uh, who were in Donald Trump's room that uh, night of November 9th, 2013, the night of the Miss Universe pageant. Uh, five Is that unusual for a high ruler like that to have five? Uh, or were you, why are you not saying prostitutes? Are you saying something else? Consultants? Uh, Zivadli. Oh, what's that? Is mean? what say over there? Yes, yeah, um, uh, Here I say prostitute. Okay, sure. Or 
whore. Oh, oh yeah, oh, whore. Whore. Uh, and were these specifically ladies of the evening or ladies of the afternoon or ladies all, of the all late hours, night? All hours. All, oh, these were, so these, uh, I mean, that's high quality. 7 high, 11. He did 7 11 of prostitutes. Oh, well, that's the top dollar prostitute. Mm, wow. <laughs> a prostitute. Wow, wow, wow. But over wow. there again, it's more like fun. Slurpy. You know, it's yeah. festive. It's like when you'd uh, go on log flume rides, yeah, you know, a sure. theme park. Know and flume then after, rides. you don't know you're being photographed, right? Yeah. But then after, they say, you want videotape. Oh. You don't mind. You're, you're glad someone documented it. You want. You wanted to remember the time. Yeah. This Charge is a home. very, very important insight that you have just helped us. Because this thing is being described to us as compromat, right? That he's... Uh, uh, there's don't tape. know this word. Uh, oh, really? I thought it was a Russian word. Uh, this is a word. It means uh, compromising material for blackmailing a person and that this tape has been used to control Donald Trump, right? But you're saying that that's, this is not what these tapes are meant it's typically not. for. Russia. It's like for welcome. A uh, keepsake. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a special, like, you know, on the hotel menu. You uh-huh. know what I mean? You can oh, get on turn the dr- down service. Yes. Or like chocolate on pillow. Right. Or pita. And it's probably wildly overpriced, like everything in the mini bar. Oh, it's bar very, a very expensive. Is there a very circumstance expensive. where chocolate on the pillow means something differently? <laughs> oh, you don't even know. Okay. You don't even know. <laughs> and two chocolate? Oh, dear. And if it's chocolate with nuts, you know, there's a whole system. I'm, and you're very smart. I'm surprised you know so much about it. I did a little time. Uh, I, I had spent some time in Minsk. Um, oh, it's beautiful. I did a bit of a sabbatical beautiful over there. When you know some, that you have a high roller coming in, someone who's big, mm-hmm. someone you know who's going to want something, are you calling... Like uh, special women? Are you calling the girls that you know have been drinking water all oh, day? Yes, yes. Oh, or is yeah, it the yeah. kind of situation where you get whoever's available no. and you kind of, you know how they do no. foie gras? Oh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Where they force feed sure. the goose sure. until its liver explodes. This is sort of yeah. like what? They bury the goose in put a, a pit. Do you have to put a. Uh, Jesus a, you have to, Christ. <laughs> that's just, I never knew that about oh, foie gras. That, they have to bury a, the goose so I, that all that sticks out of the ground is his mouth. You that's put a right. funnel in it and you put God. feed in it. I mean, I is never liked the, the French. The kind of thing with the same with these girls is yeah. you've got to put a tube down there. What kind of water? Is it just tap? Are they doing like smart water, vitamin water? Uh, there's yeah. a lot of rain water. And rain snow. water. There's a lot of snow. Wow. So we take snow. Any, oh. of the, uh, any of the girls have diabetes by any chance? Because... I like the it. people with diabetes urinate constantly. They do, and is mm-hmm. it? Is, uh, <laughs> it makes me. No, worry. I was just wondering if most, yeah. if uh, any most. sort of a kidney disorder would that be uh, right? Help? Yeah, I, I went. I've down notified my girls to Venezuela one time, and no shit, there was a woman with a tube of water going in here, and they had rigged up a system where she had a constant flow of water and was able to constantly pee. So there was never a break in the action. Oh, oh come wow. and go at any like, time. Um, was that like, a Chavez? <laughs> like, like. Uh, like uh, like circular breathing if you're exactly a horn like, player. Yeah, are you going to play the didgeridoo or are you going to fill up a tureen? Yeah. It's the same now, thing. Now, why did they do that? <laughs> so that they could have constant <laughs> shows. They wouldn't have to take a break. Oh, yeah, I see. The audience there's, come, there's and, lots come and go. of burnout. It's, uh, it's right. very see, exhausting. It takes a yeah. lot of work. And your career is uh, basically uh, over at 24, something like, like a dance show. Because you can't keep well, Because you start at 2. At 24 start. hours. Yeah. Well, it's like being a rocket. Yeah. Oh, and a lot of these girls, I think, get very dehydrated and turn into raisins. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, well that's very sad. Isn't yeah, it, reasons it's sad. not it's not good, but it's it is like ballet, and uh, it's you know like like fountain dance like in Las Vegas. Yeah. Oh, also nice detail is yes. um, on the sheets. Oh yes, yes. Uh, not sheets, but sheets. sheets. Yes, yes. Sheets. Um, there's actual picture of oh. uh, the Obama. No kidding. Michelle. Oh, yeah. what a kidding. good idea that is. Makes it more satisfying. It, yeah. Right. So literally a photo of them is being And it's yeah. so photographs it, very well. photo? Is it embroidered? Is it latch hook? It's, it's very, it's, it's ancient, beautiful needlepoint. Oh, gosh. Uh, gosh. <laughs> very wow. well. So it's now wow. it's sort of soiled like the Shroud of Turin. And it, it soaks <laughs> it up. You know, right. it holds on to it. <laughs> shroud so, of Turin soil? Sure And is. he gets it's to stained. take it with him. So. The Shroud of Turin has been urinated on many, many times. <laughs> Well, I think uh, no a lot of yourself. people don't know that it, I believe it began as something to wipe with. Uh, that's right. Yeah, By yeah. the big guy himself. And I think that's how it himself. started. You know, after you, pa- after you pass your bodily fluids. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jesus. It was the origins of, of toilet, toilet paper. I go to church, so I can like, say it. That's right. And I mean. please do not forget to buy bonobos. <laughs> 
I don't know if the foie gras or the shrouded <laughs> tourin, they, both of them have just stunned Bobby, me here. Bobby. Bobby. I was really learning a lot today. Well, I'm not going to tell you about my the dancer pits. Urine. I do have, da- I have dancer pits. I keep dancers in <laughs> pits. On, only their heads on. are sticking out. And from the head down, they're dancing. And the point is, can we tell from only seeing your head above the ground that you're dancing? And if we can, trouble. Now, that's like the Irish dances. It's just like the Irish dances. Well, you can't see in the we window don't, that we, you don't want to know they're dancing. You don't want mm-hmm. to know they're they dancing. Do, they dance uh, like that because they're repressed sexually. Ah. And the Irish. Now, here's a, are you familiar with the presidential suite at the Ritz-Carlton Moscow? Do you know the room? Yes. Because this is one I of my- I go beforehand li- and check it out. Oh, you've, seen, you've, you've been there. I have a logistical issue, which is if I'm Donald Trump and these girls have just urinated on the, on the bed I'm supposed to sleep in, <laughs> what do I do now? If you're do you Donald have any Trump, insights on that? Yes. If, then you sleep in it. You yeah. sleep in it. You think he slept in it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I mean, that was the whole point. That's good to know. He uh. wanted to soak himself in a urine-stained Obama. It's uh, like a like see, a okay. normal people would have like a lilac diffuser or some kind of uh, right, just like spray, oil. like spray, aromatherapy. like lavender. That's right, aromatherapy. That was the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have learned an enormous amount about a wide range of topics here today, but most especially on the P-tape. I do want to do that something here. If you guys will bear with me here, I don't know if I'm going to include this in the broadcast. I have been strongly advised by my lawyer not to include this in the broadcast. As you know, uh, as you may, maybe you don't know, uh, there have been some public accusations of what they call misconduct of me by some rockets. And that's just something that is happening, and I have uh, written a statement because I've been suspended by Radio City Music Hall pending an internal review. Don't worry about that. Old Don DeMello will be back. Don't worry. But I, I have a statement, and my lawyer has said, under no circumstances should I release this statement. I and you a- have the same lawyer as Donald Trump with the crazy mustache? Yeah, that's my guy, right. Ty Cobb. He is the <laughs> Thank best. You. He is number one. Uh, and he, But he, I don't know. He doesn't think I should put out this statement, but I'm going to read it here, and I, you know, I don't know if it'll be a part of the broadcast, but my statement is, as director of the Radio City Music Hall Christmas Spectacular, I do whatever the fuck I want. I am deeply sorry that some people do not seem to get that. (laughs) It has been alleged that I have inappropriately groped the women who work for me. I swear to you that I have only groped them appropriately during regular business hours and with my hands. Have I shown my dick to women who admire me? Often. Have I shown it to women who detest me? All the time. Have I shown it to women who have no idea who I am or what's going on or where they are or how they got here? I will not dignify that question with a response. It has been suggested that I have at times required women to have sex with me in exchange for stage time. Well, of course I have. They're dancers. (laughs) I have also been accused of making a, quote, common practice of feeding dancers to camels. Well, it is not that common. You have to really make me mad before I'm feeding you to a camel at all. And let me make one thing very clear. I have never fed an entire rocket to a camel. I intend to fight these accusations with every method at my disposal, up to and including disappearance and murder. (laughs) I have no intention whatsoever of joining Harvey Weinstein's fight against the National Rifle Association, which I hear is going incredibly well. Sincerely yours, uh, Don DeMello, theatrical director. That is my statement. I don't know why my lawyer doesn't want that out there. <coughs> that was terrific. Oh, thank you very it's much. Time. It was time. I, I think it clears up a lot of things. And uh, Now that's finished. It's done. That's right. It's taken care I, of. The, these problems are behind me if people can just read this statement. Well, for, thank you all so much for being a part of our uh, inaugural uh, PTA podcast. And uh, we learned an enormous amount. Does anybody have anything to plug? Oh, I will say <clears throat> that this uh, spring up uh, at the farm, if you can find it, we will be hosting the Gathering of the Juggalos. Oh, you are? You're no kidding. Yep. Really? Uh, the insane clown posse and uh-huh. all the people that are with them will be there to uh, wow. uh, do all of the drugs and uh, yes. uh, do all of the nonsense they do. And, uh, you know, it's a bit of a fundraiser. It's pretty exciting. And that group has recently been targeted by the FBI. Correct. They have been a- uh, qual- qual- classified, rather, as a gang. As a gang. Uh, yeah. They tried to fight it. Uh, they uh-huh. were not successful. And hence, the next gathering of the Juggalos is in an unfindable, <laughs> fog-shrouded farm. Yep. Interesting. Okay, well, that's good for you to jump in there and help those clouds. 
Mal, you got anything to plug the ninth, yeah. the state on uh, the telephone polls? Anything else? Right. I, I'm I'm using up the rec room there at El Patio and Ed Lanzani Upholstery to do a bit of a, well, I'm calling it a Ponzi party. And now what I'm doing is I'm having people over to sell them a Ponzi scheme. Well, I'm didn't not you doing get in trouble scheme. for this, though? I did. Mal, that is you, you went to jail. This is what you went to jail for. I'm on parole, and you okay. can't double jeopardy. You can't double indemnity. Well, oh, I don't think that's how that works nah, at all. You can't get tried for it twice. You should look Full into proof. that. Foolproof. Come on down. We're doing this Tuesday nights, yeah. and um, and uh, you know, bring a friend if you can too, because the, immediately if you bring a friend, you've already won. You've already, you already. They'll so go it's through a contest. You. It's a contest of sorts. Yeah, uh, I'd love for you fellas to come to an arena as well. If you if you're not doing anything, I would like to bring five friends. This oh. is great. Wow. This is great. This is gonna go well. Five friends. Uh, Bob Frederick, you have anything you want? To- uh, just as one unit available. Oh, I, oh. one of my apartments. Okay, and. Um, nice. Just Google Bob Fredericks. Bob Fredericks. And you'll, you'll eventually find the link. Probably the, if you were to put in Bob Fredericks and pipe organ, it, it would get you <laughs> yeah, there because maybe that's. Narrow it down. Or mustache. Or stovepipe. Must, yeah. yeah. Stovepipe. Yeah. So, yeah. Any okay. of these keywords. Mm-hmm. Uh, Irina, anything to plug uh, uh, for you? What are you up to? Uh, I is a um, Jumbo's Clown Room. Oh, sure. Oh, we know Jumbo's. Are oh, you yeah. kidding me? So oh, my God. We know Jumbo. Yeah, this, yeah. It's, it's for like art show, like uh, paintings. We remember that place oh. when there used to be an elephant inside the place. Yeah. Yes. Right. Every every night you yes. could really get it drunk and, and it'd stomp someone. Uh, yeah, that elephant was a camera, my friend. The elephant. the elephant was a camera? Uh, yes. What? I had no yes. Yeah. The and entire you elephant was a camera? Him. You can still smell him. <laughs> yeah, do you know about under jumbos? <laughs> Uh, under jumbos. Under jumbos, you you probably don't. I think there's. I think at current count, there's six guys that know about under jumbos, and oh. uh, and they they're dying out fast. But anyway, under jumbos <laughs> is a thing. All right. Well, uh, it's this was a wonderful uh, event. Thank you so much, Arena, for your extraordinary insights, and Bob as well, and Mal and Falcon. And uh, uh, I hope that this gets picked up to be a regular podcast because in the second episode we have already booked. Steve Bannon. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, Goodbye. Okay. I can't believe they got ads for that. And I mean that in a complimentary way, like, well done. Yeah, right, that's true. Math well done. (laughs) (laughs) It took some boldness to get some ads for that. Uh, And uh, I feel like so much was explored, and and I really did learn a lot. Yeah, and as a listener, I hope you agree with us that that was not a book to be judged by its cover. There's a lot more to mine there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this this for me has been the most educational of all the pilots that we've done. I I feel like I learned so much about camera technology and and just what's happening out there in the world. Yeah, I mean it, it might as well be an NPR podcast, you know. I, yeah, yeah. So you know that's something to tell Earwolf. If we turn this down, he's going straight to NPR. Oh, that's huge. You're right. I'm going to put yeah. that in my back pocket. Good. Yeah. They will run with it. Uh, yeah. So some people to thank here for uh, this podcast: uh, Jason Manzukas. Eddie Pepitone, Mary Birdsong, and uh, Dave Wilder, who composed the theme song. You can check him out at wilderstylemusic.com. Eddie Pepitone and Mary Birdsong. I love those guys. Why are we thanking them? I don't know, but they are great. They are wonderful. They must Jason have been Manzucas, in. Our, are you kidding me? Probably. I think most of these names are just people who do research and fact checks for, oh, that be for the hosts, you know? Yeah. Because this is a political one, so we got to get our facts straight. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Good. That anyway. makes sense. Well, you wrap this up. I'm going to head right up to the penthouse and demand that this become a, a, a podcast. Very good. Yes, the board meeting is happening in the penthouse right now. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for listening to our third episode. Next week, we will be back with the fourth episode. We're doing them in order. <laughs> Next week's episode is, uh, is called uh, Terrifying Edinburgh with Cameron McGonagall, and it is a charmer. We'll see you then. Thank you. Bye. This holiday season, Earwolf wants to spread some cheer. Cheerwolf, if you will. We've got special episodes all over the network, 
just for you. Andrew T. and Tawny Newsom talk to Kulop Vile, I can't pronounce this, about holiday racism on Yo! Is This Racist? That sounds fun. Unspooled takes a deep dive into AFI's favorite Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Off Book has not one, not two, not four, but three holiday-themed musicals for you to indulge in? Surprise! All the special holiday episodes of With Special Guests are out from behind the paywall as a gift to you. You can also check out a very special Improv for Humans episode, Best of the Bible. On Are You Talking R.E.M. Remi, the Scots talk about every R.E.M. holiday single released and nothing else. Sean and Hayes hit the slopes with Adam Pally on a very festive episode of Hollywood Handbook. Beautiful Anonymous, Chris Gethard is taking calls for New Year's resolutions. Tune in on Earwolf's Facebook page December 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern. Marissa and Listler get a special listener call in with a heartfelt proposal on Womp It Up. Followed by the Christmas Womptacular released from behind the paywall and if that's not enough check out even more special holiday apps from how did this get made getting curious who charted freedom of course comedy bang bang happy holidays happy listening and a merry cheer wolf to all so much stuff so much cheer cheer wolf <laughs>